It's beer o'clock on Real L Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Gen Lane. Some of you might have watched my Gen Lane Beer to Guard video where I bought a beer from 27 years ago and put it up against a relatively new can of Gen Lane Beer to Guard. But we're back with another Gen Lane beer and this is their triple. Uh, beer Blonde Sur Le Vieux. Uh, it's 8.5% ABV. It's in a half litre can, 500ml can. And it's between 25 and 30 IBUs. So it's not an exact IBU. I think that's the first time I've ever seen like the IBUs being either 25 or 30 or in between. Normally they get a bang on, bang on the money. Uh, so this has been brewed by Brasserie Duisk. Uh, family independent brewery in 2022 celebrating their 100th birthday in 2022 so that would have been it would have been 1922 when the brewery started aren't I good at maths uh, I have to think about that one uh, so let's get this beer out then into a glass and see what we get here we go I want to thank the lovely Rob and his family who went away to France on holiday. I know the whole family. Um, they like to watch the videos apparently, so uh, cheers to you guys. I like to make them. When I get beers like this, interesting beers like this, I, I really like to stand here and make the videos. So I've, it's the reason why we started the channel in the first place is because I'm first and foremost interested in beer um, from standing. I think did I ever stand out? I think I sat out here. Believe it or not, it was like either Shepherd Neem Spitfire or um, Shepherd Neem Bishop's Finger or something. I sat out here and sat in the garden, but it was like a you could see it was a dry stone wall back then. Uh, now it's a extended glass roof bar <laughs> so we got a one a one finger white head a uh, good levels of carbonation rolling up the glass it looks good it does it does look good slightly hazy Amber. I, I, I almost said like an orangey coloured beer, but it's, yeah, amber, amber coloured beer. A little bit of haze going on. And there's little bits of micro sediment in the bottom of the glass there. Looks good. Looks really good. Let's, uh, let's get the aroma then on the beer. That smells good. It does. It's got that very typical Belgian stroke French triple aroma to it. It's almost dry and spicy, but at the same time, there's a little bit of a fruitiness coming through. Just to kind of balance out that, that lovely Hoppiness, really. And yeah, I'm going to say a lovely hoppiness coming through. Of course, these beers are not 100% dictated, but there's a lot of flavour coming from the yeast in these beers, too. Yeah, but a slightly kind of orange peely type. Citrusy, a little bit of toffee apple maybe from the malt. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cool.
first things first, the first thing that I want to talk about is that hissy, fizzy carbonation on the tongue. It's like, like hissing and fizzing and pushing the beer around and letting the beer explode, the flavour explode on the tongue. Really good. Really, really good. <clears throat> Loads of orange peel. Loads of orange peel. Still battling with that carbonation. It's like it's like a fire extinguisher in the mouth. But it's quite it's quite orange peely. Pithy. Hoppy. Malty. Sweet. Sweetness coming through from that malt. Spicy, peppery finish. Even though it's eight point five percent ABV, it's still it's still offering a great drinkability to the beer. It's still very drinkable. There's a little bit of dryness coming through. And I always associate that kind of Belgian triple clean spicy dryness. I associate that with the yeast. It's it's Oh, it's a lovely beer. It really I'm gonna go as far. What am I? Eight minutes in. Six minutes into this beer review, and I'm going to say Stone the Crows. Probably one of the latest Stone the Crows I've ever did. But I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure, and I wanted to kind of just envelop and just take in that beer. It's really good. Really, really good beer. This brewery's got some history. You can tell, you can tell there's some history here. You can tell that they pride themselves on producing... Great beer. I am slightly worried going forward though. It almost feels like they're slightly leaning into that. I mean, I've just reviewed Bell's Birth Extra Strong. And I just feel like, unless it's just a thing in France to, to put triples in a half litre can and say, hey, hold on, crack on, you know, that type of thing. But... Um, they used to produce their beers in the little Belgian-shaped, dumpy-style 330ml bottles. But you can tell that they've invested, they've invested quite a lot into probably a very recent canning machine. And they decided to put their beers in cans. But the danger, this is a better way of putting it, the danger of putting it in a 500ml can is that you cross paths with the other cheaper 500 mil pack bench style beers that you see. And I suppose, and I suppose this all boils down to one point, and I'm nearly through drinking um, a lot of these 500 mil Belgian cans. The point is, and the not so much of a problem, but there is a point to all of this, and that is that alcohol is generally cheaper than water in France. It's always been very, very cheap, especially buying it in off licenses and, and supermarkets. Very, very cheap to buy beer. When you think about France, you think about fine wines. You can buy a bottle of wine in France for three euros. Maybe, well, well, I was last there. Maybe it's five euros now. But you can get a really good French wine for five euros. Um, so this is what the beer industry in France is up against. Is 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 they're up against um, probably fighting with that little 
330 milliliter Belgian style bottle. They're struggling with that kind of concept of trying to get people to buy quite an expensive bottle of beer when they could buy just buy a bottle of wine instead for, for very similar money. So I suppose the 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 way Genling Brewery have gone is that they've gone, right, we need to offer more beer for the money, but try and hold on to some of that quality. I might be completely wrong. I might be completely wrong here, but that, that's just my feeling. That's just my feeling when I when I got hold of this can. It's very dangerously close, close to crossing that precipice of 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 landing next to Bell's but extra strong, a 12% ABV strong lager. This is a much better beer than Bellsbeth. I'm not trying to kind of associate this beer with Bellsbeth at all. This is a much better beer, much more quality to it. But people who, the consumer, the people who buy beer, they may not know that. They may not know that the, the, the Jenlin's the same as, as, as Bellsbeth or Bell's. You know, Jenlin's a much better beer than Bellsbeth. They might just go eeny, meeny, miny, mo, you know, and pick a beer that way. Uh, any ingredients on the can? No, no ingredients on the can, but it's a really good beer. It, 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 um, for me, um, I, I'm used to drinking Belgian triples and Belgian doubles and Belgian blondes. Of course, France borders Belgium and, and th these breweries are probably, do they even say, these brewery, breweries probably, no, this is Northern France. This is Northern France. I was about to say these breweries probably border Belgium a little bit, but uh, they're different. The, 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 the French Belgian triples, sorry, the French triples, the French doubles and the French blondes are different to the Belgian blondes, triples and quadruples and stuff. Does that make sense? The Belgian stuff is of a better quality, no doubt, but this is okay. This is okay. It's a, it's a very solid seven out of 10. Seven out of 10 from Relo Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.